has a dog or a cat that, that's a chip. No, we want her chip. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know about this, but um, human, now it's an option for humans to get chipped with a microchip. And it's optional for anyone to go buy one and get it. Um, this is not something new. It's been going on for about 11 years. Uh, ever since the FDA approved in 2004, um, Berry Chips actually a major corporation that sells and markets these microchips. Um, it's actually one of um, the first companies also, and uh, primarily for the use of pets and made these um, chips. But when the FDA approved in 2004, um, they started selling them, and um, the company acquired that about 200 to 300 Americans chipped themselves with, the, with these devices without any force. Um, my major claim is that these implantations should not be optional, and they should be completely banned in the United States because of their harmful effects on society. Um, before I go into depth of what a microchip implant is, I want to, um, uh, uh, before I go into depth, sorry, before I go into depth of why I think they should be banned, I want to talk about um, more about what they are. So a microchip is a very small radio frequency identification chip. It's about the size of a, um, of a rice. And it's injected into an in individual's arm, hand, or wrist, wrist in the same manner as a vaccine. This process is inexpensive and not painful, and it takes about like 15 minutes to do it. Um, you can go to a doctor and get this done, or you can even buy a do-it-yourself kit online. A company called Dangerous Things, yeah, <laughs> a company called Danger Dangerous Things sells it online. Um, you can buy the kit and do it yourself. It's actually very cheap, only $44. Some of them are more expensive. It depends on the quality that you want. Um, you might ask yourself, why in the world would anyone want to chip themselves? There's actually a lot, I'm not going to lie to you guys, there's a lot of benefits to chipping yourself. For example, if um, you got kidnapped, it can save your life. Or if you are suffering Alzheimer's patient, it can um, track your medical records. If you are like, if you work in a high security building, it can give you access. Um, it can help you make purchases. Um, there's actually a really famous nightclub in Spain. It's called the Baja Nightclub. I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it offers its VIP members to get chipped. So instead of using their credit cards, they can just use their, their arms to scan the, um, to buy drinks with their arms. Um, all of these uh, benefits seem, great, uh, seem great, but they're only short-term benefits. And if you look at the long-term benefits, they're not that great because um, just the general acceptance of these microchips in society has made it become more popular and more commonplace that one day all the technology is going to become independent, I mean, dependent on these chips. So um, no one will have a choice but to get these chips implanted into their bodies. Um, Very Chip, the company that I was talking about, actually required their employees to get chipped in order to work in the company. But because of public disapproval, um, this deal was disclosed in 2010. <coughs> Not only that, if you get a, a chip inside of your body, um, anyone can just pass by you and scan your information within a matter of seconds. Um, they can steal your information, they can track your moves, and they can even control your transaction, transactions if they wanted to. Not only do they impose um, risks on, 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 on security, they can also impose medical risks. They can interfere with pacemakers. Even though the FDA approved this in 2004, they have actually discovered that if you have a pacemaker and a microchip ins inside of your body, the signals that each of them emits um, interfere with one another and can cause uh, potential harm to your body. Um, <clears throat> there's also a, a study in the Reading University in the UK that um, about 1 to 10% of laboratory animals developed cancer because of this microchip. Most of them were tested on rats. And also, um, there's a lot of ins reported incidents of dogs getting cancer because of these devices. And the company Very Chip, Very Chip is being sued by many pet owners. Um, microchips can, cause, can also cause bodily harm because once they're implanted into their body, it's going to be hard to remove because they get interwined with, with the tissues inside of your body. So you would require um, s surgical procedures to um, remove these microchips. Um, so basically, you're stuck with these for life, so I'm warning you guys, don't let this get into your head. Yes, it does have some benefits, but it does have some um, harms. Uh, we don't want to be cyborgs in the future. We want to be normal humans. So, um, yeah, so these implantations should not even be optional. They should be completely banned in the United States. Were you going to give me that outline? I don't have an outline.
Oh, okay. Well, the proposition is clearly identified, but it's a claim of policy, so that's kind of outside of the purview of what we're talking about. There are claims of, of fact that are being presented here, and I think that ought to be your focus, that there are potential dangers, uh, that, the, that this chipping is going to result in some harmful consequence. That's really what your claim should be, but you make it uh, that we should ban it. And like I said, that's a policy claim, and I think that that creates uh, problems for you down the road if we were having this argument in a more extended format. Uh, the contents are not really previewed. There's not a structure set up. And in the body of the speech, I don't see any structure at all. I just get random pieces of information. I think sometimes the information is interesting, and sometimes you do provide a source citation, although I think that's a little inconsistent. Um, there's a lot of factual data that's being presented about the chips, which I don't doubt is true. Uh, you've got a couple of examples that you point to that that's pretty good. Uh, one, one study is cited when it talks about the cancer risk, and that's about as far as it goes when it comes to um, uh, any of those issues in terms of proof. So I think you need to have a little bit more information there. This, sh this shouldn't be that hard to put together. Uh, like we, ta I, you know, we talked about this the other night when you came by and um, we had this discussion. The argument is this is dangerous and why is it dangerous? One, it's dangerous because it's going to create a demand for people to do that. And you made that argument in there and I think that that's a good argument, but it needs to be a lot more developed. Uh, it's easy to point to, for instance, previous examples where something starts off as, uh, um, I don't know, uh, a novelty, a, luck, you know, a luxury, something that is a, a temporary convenience, and then the next thing you know, uh, it becomes something that is required. And the perfect example on that would probably be most people's cell phones. You know, uh, you know 10 or 15 years ago, yeah, it was, uh, if you wanted one, that was great. Nowadays, you're an inconvenience to the rest of the world if you don't have a cell phone, and you can't even get some things done because you, you have to have an app to get those things done. So yeah, I, I think there's a good argument to be made that says if we cross this threshold, we won't be able to turn back. I think that argument needs to be developed. And then the other argument is there's a problem with that because that information would be vulnerable or problematic in some way, and all I got were assertions on that. You talk about how people could steal your information and scan you at random. I don't know how that happens, if it's possible. Uh, you know, it's, it's all asserted, and, and I think you need some data on this, or at least an expert who believes that this is true, and you can quote that person, and we can rely on their authority as a way of judging whether or not there's a real problem here. Uh, like I said, I think you need to have a stronger organizational pattern. That's the big issue. On presentation, you do sound like you're trying to rush through the speech and just get it done. And I think you need to slow down a little bit, talk to us, explain the concept. If you can get it a little more organized, I think you'd have a stronger argument. And then you need evidence in key places to be able to advance your claim. All right. Thank you.